Christina, thank you for joining us. So what are you working on at the moment? Well, we, we have actually three programs in, in our R&D. We have um, one program that is uh, for our current plants. We have plants in Finland and Sweden. Then we can have another program which is like a new nuclear business development. And then we have the third program which is future nuclear technologies. So we have small modular reactors, we have a um, nuclear role in the future energy system, we have other longer term uh, development questions. And in terms of rolling out these new technologies, how far into the future are you looking? <laughs> it's a very, very good question because we don't know, even with the current new builds, new built uh, nuclear plants, we are looking till 2025 or something. So if we talk about small modular reactors, I, I wouldn't say, I would say that they would maybe become relevant between 20 and 30, 2020, 2030. What would you say the current landscape is for nuclear energy and its acceptance in general society? Well, it, it has its challenges, but I think the, the main problem, at least in, in Europe, is that we have very low electricity prices right now. And uh, we, we have a lot of subsidies for the renewables and that puts the price down. So we, we can't really build anything new at the moment. So we are just waiting the situation to get better to start again, again building maybe new nuclear. And thinking more specifically about small modular reactors, what is the direct question that they answer? I think that uh, the electricity market is changing and we can't build these huge units because they are not really flexible. They take a long time to, to get done. It's too big investments, too big risks and when, when the project doesn't go as you planned, it, it's years. Like, you know, Olkiloto 3 has been quite many years late and with small modular reactors we could maybe take that risk down. We could maybe build them in more, more of the sites, closer to the, to the cities where you actually use the electricity. So I think there are many good things that we can achieve. And how do you think that small modular reactors will be part of that larger push to push down carbon emissions? I think all nuclear is good for that. But it's not, it's not, of course, only nuclear. It's, it's also renewables we have to see and, and hydro. But nuclear is a good, good combination with the renewables to, to answer that question. And small modular reactors might suit to the future, future energy system better than these big plants. But we have a lot to do to get there. And how do you think public policy will surround this new technology? That's a very good question and that's one issue that we should discuss more with the public. We should come out and tell the public that these are small modular reactors and this is how they are and this is how they could be close to your homes or, or I don't know how close but uh, further or closer but anyways we have to address these questions otherwise I think nuclear is too closed and we talk with these very, very specific uh, terminology and, and a lot of numbers. So we should uh, really talk to the public with the language that can be understood. What is the World Nuclear Association's part to play in all of this? Uh, we have this working group for small modular reactors in World Nuclear Association Cordell. And we have been working for maybe two to three years and we have addressed a couple of issues. Uh, we just actually published our first paper. It's about international licensing of small modular reactors. And I think that's a good starting point. And we have many discussions about issues that we have to address. So we have this kind of timeline and we try to point out that these are the issues where the World Nuclear Association is the right organization to answer. How do you think that nuclear energy is an important part of the answer to COP? I think it should play a part. Uh, the, the difficult part is that it's all about politics. And after Fukushima, the politics for nuclear power hasn't been really good. 
So it's not really discussed a lot. And even in European Union, all the papers, they, they point out the renewables and how important they are. But they can't really solve the whole problem. I think they need something else to support them because it's not all, always windy or sunny. You need something to pack up. And I think nuclear can suit to pack up those, those renewables quite well. What do you think the most exciting development within the sector is? I think there are many, many exciting developments. Of course, one is that we have to use more IT to, to, really, to really get nuclear there because current nuclear power plants, they are really kind of old technology. And we are just getting to this digitali digitalization and new automation and things like that. So I think that's one part that really has to change to, to answer the future questions. And what do you think the future holds? Well, I hope that it holds a lot of new built projects. Right now, it seems that uh, Asian countries are the ones that actually build new nuclear. And uh, Europe and USA is kind of getting kind of slow. And uh, we have problems with our current, current projects. But I really hope that we get success in some of those projects and we really learn. We have to learn from our mistakes and make the next ones uh, better on time, on schedule, on budget. Thank you very much for your time. No problem.